there is a subject here that I want to talk with both of you about, which is the world that we have been moving into, which is uh, in Canada, which is a more corporate world, which is arts have pushed back from the center. It was never in the center, but the arts have been pushed more to the margins and entertainment has ended up in the center and we're way off to the sides. So first, how do you see this appearing in your work? You say in your fittings, your fittings get shorter. And where do we go as artists to try to deal with that? Big question. It is a big question, but I thought we just, you know, because we all three care about it. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a question for viewers yes. because it's tough. And it's yes. probably going to get tougher before it gets easier. There was an article in the Globe Mail quite a few years ago written by somebody in the business area who said that the Japanese at that time would rather have had rather than a trade delegation, would rather have had Maureen Forrester come to, to Japan so that they could identify with Canada and what Canada and who Canada was. And I think often over history, I'm afraid it's not the sports heroes, the one that races in Greece in, in, the, um, in the first Olympics, that you remember, it's your Michelangelo, it's Shakespeare, it's all the artists of the world because they say something about the country, who the country is, what the country is. And the funny thing about Canada, I came to live in the country 40 years ago and we came because Canada had a tremendous identity to it for us. It, it was a nation of peacekeepers. But we also knew about Manitoba Theatre Centre. We knew about the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. This is coming from Britain. And we knew about the Stratford Festival. But I have to say, MTC and the Royal Winnipeg had more profile in Britain in 66, in a funny way, than the other places. I can't tell you why, but they did. Wow. There was a vibrancy there. And coming to Canada, for my mother and myself, well, the whole family, who were, came from theatre background, involvement in the theatre, there was a tremendous excitement here and an acknowledgement of how important the arts were. At that time in Canada, what was exciting was that you got, you talk about unity in the country, and if Canada is going to remain Canada. You have to have that unity. You have to have a sense that we are all have similar beliefs, if not all the same beliefs. And one thing that helped in the 60s was the fact that money was given to the arts so that a company from Quebec, whether they were musicians or actors, artists, could tour across to Vancouver so people in Vancouver could see what they were doing in Quebec. And you get people from BC going to Nova Scotia. And then, of course, you had Expo. It was extremely exciting for everybody. Brought a lot of artists together. And there was an understanding of how the artist contributed to who the Canadian nation was. Why do you think we're not so interested in that now, in the broader sense in Canada? Because I think people are into power having power, they like their individual little provinces and being able to run them and forgetting that Canada is a country, it's made up of many different people, that's the excitement of it, many different cultures, but we are a country, I hope, that's why I am. my family emigrated here, we're not part of the United States, we are a country and our identity has to be strengthened, it was there I don't believe it is now because I think Canadians step back and, I mean, it's an old tale, everybody knows it, but they do not recognise their own talents. And I have to say, talking about administration, that if you look back, it's the people with the Canadian backgrounds who are running the festival theatre that are actually at the worst and believing in Canadians to play the roles, to design the shows. It's people, the non-Canadians, that have actually used 
more Canadians. They've had a belief in them. You look at Richard Bradshaw with the opera. He's used a lot of Canadians. He has believed in them. But I bet you if you had a Canadian running the Canadian Opera Company, their confidence in their own countrymen would not be strong. And I think this is a problem that people have got to get over and government has to get over the fact. I mean, the, if they don't understand how important the arts are, this country is going to go down the drain very quickly. But Susan, the government would do it, would they not, if the population expressed the need but for it? But you've got to educate them. So the, our, you, we have become marginalised and the broader public is less and less attached to the yeah, arts, so but to speak. But if you can have a Prime Minister giving money to junior hockey, but not giving money to theatres, then you have a problem, and I'm not saying hockey isn't important. It is. It's very much part of the texture of the country. But you have to understand what the arts mean to a country. Mm -hmm. You go to any other country in the world, most countries in the world, they know who their artists are. Mm -hmm. Michael, what are your thoughts on this? Because you I work in the States... A lot. Yeah. You work in a number of different cultures. Yeah, I, th I think it, I think it's, I'll reinforce what Sue's saying. I think that there are aspects of any, what would you call it, sort of national government that have to be leading rather than following. And it's, it's I mean, I, I appreciate that the, the so called democratic system is actually not set up that way because the government's, the first job, the first responsibility of a government that gets into power is to stay in power. And to do that, it's supposed to reflect the, what would you call them, the, um, the demands, I guess is the word in a sense, or the wishes of the people. But unfortunately, in, in a number of issues, I mean, uh, currently the ecological sort of battles is a good example that, that a government has to take the initiative and say, I don't care whether you think you should have an SUV. There's got to be a point where you say, sorry, we'll have to raise the gas prices in order to dissuade you from running an SUV and running the whole system down. So I think that the, the, the first issue, frankly, is that a government, a national government, has to assume a responsibility for, in effect, retaining 